With Sonoma in the books, and we're headed to cornfield country in uh, middle of nowhere, Iowa, Brian and I are here to react to the carnage that was Sonoma, which become, you know, basically Talladega 2.0 all of a sudden for some reason on Sunday. And then we'll obviously talk about Iowa, which is a relatively new track for the lot of the guys. Uh, obviously, yeah. there's some Xfinity crossover and all that stuff. We'll figure out how to bet that. We'll talk about the week that was, and we'll talk about more all on this week's Angle of Pursuit podcast. Ross Chastain used the wall all the way around this racetrack. Logano has been the class of the field. Check out the big brain on Brad. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. Brian Twining. We'll obviously talk Iowa. We'll get you set for this week's betting card. Figure out where to find value, how to find value, um, what we should be doing. We need to talk about Sonoma and the shit show it was for two stages, maybe two. Like all of a sudden, uh, at the end of stage two, it just like, oh, actually, no, wait, this isn't a super speedway. We don't need to run into each other every two minutes. We don't need our the the backs of our cars being ripped off. Although we did get some. Not necessarily an accident, but it was carnage at the end. So we can talk about all that. So I guess Sonoma is in the books. It felt like Kyle Larson was coming and then he got there and then he was gone. And, um, you know, crazy finishes, Truex running out of gas and finishing like, you know, top 20 barely, I think. And um, yeah, yeah, I guess. Sonoma, like, what was your biggest takeaway from Sunday and like the shit show that we ended up ended up unfolding for basically two stages? Well, I'll just start by saying I was extremely happy early on by the run that Tyler Reddick was putting together early in the race, and I had texted Kyle and basically laid out how I thought the race was going to go, and probably two laps. Before they started pitting, before the end of stage two, what my text included, Reddick will blow up on coming to the white flag or something. And sure enough, he comes out of the pits. He's trying to rush it and gain that spot back on Larson at the at a time that it wasn't necessary, ruining his shot to win the race, affecting his right front. So I think, like, obviously that that to me was the biggest uh, letdown of the race. I just I kind of like started sulking from that point on because Reddick had the best or the second best car on, on track. But as far as the racing goes, I don't know, early on, it was really difficult to see who had anything because we weren't getting very long runs, like in track position obviously was key. And then, you know, as we got later into the race, like it was clear, Kyle Larson was the best car because it was the only one that didn't have damage. And then how, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., and Chris Busher wound up running up front is beyond me. They they lucked into the pitch strategy situation and how everything was unfolding with the early cautions and, and such. So, look, kudos to the people who were on Truex prior to practice and then maybe added that number after practice. But in my opinion, they he had no business being up front there just because... Like, this race was was weird. I I wish we could go back to no stage cautions because then you really get to see who has the better cars. And it was something that Michael McDowell talked about early in the year when I asked him, I think it was in Vegas or Phoenix, I asked him about that. And so, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I voted yes on Jeff Flux. Is the race was the race good poll just because I think the end had a lot of intrigue, but as a whole, it was a shit show and the way that road courses are set up with the stage break cautions, I don't think it rewards the best car all the time, except for today, Kyle Larson wound up becoming victorious. But then, you know, you got guys like Ross Chastain, who, by the way, I, me and him are going through a betters quarrel right now because had had he not moved Kyle Busch out of the way, and Kyle Busch finished ahead of him and finished fifth, I, I see a pretty significant swing in my in my take home from the race this weekend. A lot to unpack there. Uh, first of all, I, for, in terms of definition of was the race good, it depends on what you consider a good race. Do you want stuff happening? Do you want intrigue? Do you want people coming from the back who don't really have a chance early in the race? Because if that's that what you want, then yes. If you want true racing, no cautions, no randoms, 
uh, you know, take away the stage break cautions. It was a bad race. Um, yeah. Uh, Joey Logano, what, why are we pitting so early in stage one? Like, what's the thought process there? And then that was just back with the squirrels. My my mind was blown when they did that. I was like, what on earth are they thinking right now? He wasn't like getting past or like quickly falling back. No, he was holding his lead. Like, what are we doing? Um, yeah, Bush, I bet live bet Truex and I live bet uh, Kyle Bush. And I was happy with both those because pretty quickly after I did that, they ended up in near the front. Uh, yep. I, I watched the video you sent me. I don't know that like Ross really did anything crazy. I know you had a ticket on KFB, so there's all- no reason to go dive bombing on He's the last not dive bombing. If anything, Bush is moving is moving up on him, and like we're l- l- lucky, Ross was able to get around and kind of keep going. The Obviously, you had like, a KFB it's... ticket. I had a Ross Chastain top five ticket, so. It's the nope. difference between b- between fifth and sixth on the last lap of the race when there's literally like almost no difference between the point allocation there for. But as someone who bets races every single week, you absolutely love to see it. <laughs> no, you Ross is Ross is happy to grab that extra spot. He's got a top ten that he probably shouldn't have. He probably got top. Like, let us know down in the comments. Was Ross out of line for for what he did to KFB? Did he do anything to KFB, or is it just Kyle Busch being an old grouch and was annoyed? Let me and add one more thing in there the too: is that so? Because Kyle Busch ran out of gas as well on that yeah. final lap, and the only reason why he fell out of the top ten was because he got spun by Chastain. Had Chastain been able to make that pass clean, he crosses the finish line probably sixth or seventh, and then we're this is a non conversation yeah. for me because then I'm still happy with where bush finished but because he spun him out knocked him out of the top 10 cost me a match or a two groups that included chastain and a top five bet on kyle bush like i i yeah i'm just not not a happy camper with the watermelon man as someone who had a kfb top 10 i was very disappointed to see him not finish i had a lot on that too so i had kfb top 10 and joey logano top 10 and i I can't believe I didn't cash either. Uh, I don't. I don't know how to how to how to handle that. Uh, all right, let's review our DraftKings lineups. Let's review the betting card, um, and we'll kind of talk through more of the race as we go along. So, I will present my screen. Okay. So this is the best lineup we put together: uh, Chase Elliott, Chris Busher, Michael McDowell. Ross Chastain, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano. Um, Logano's not a complete doofus. It's much, much better. So, um, not really sure. Like, I feel like this lineup, like, we're in a directionally accurate. Obviously, the McDowell is at a nice ownership relative um, to what uh, what his price tag was. I did expect a little bit lower than 15%. I was thinking more like single digits, like 9, 10. So I was pretty shocked to see him come in that high. But, I, you know, it is a tournament play. Maybe everyone else was thinking a little similar to me. Uh, but the Busher, pretty happy with this lineup. It was, a, it was a relatively good week on DraftKings, honestly. We made money, so that's always a win. Imagine um, if Chastain doesn't, doesn't move Kyle Busch, though. Yeah. 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 Relative. <laughs> um, I'm happy with my uh, my my account for sure. Uh, next lineup. This one did okay. Oh. This is the Truex. Obviously, has he if he finishes top three or whatever, fine. Kyle Larson, like despite winning the race, like he was fine, but like he wasn't mind blowing, especially at 10k. Um, well, I think just- too what what hurt him was was the differing pitch strategies to where he wasn't able to be out front and lead as many laps as he should have. And again, like I, I I'm sticking to my guns here. Like Tyler Reddick for me was the best car. Not, not just because he had track position, but it was clear early on that he was making headway on Logano's lead. And he, he obviously had difficulty passing him, but he was much faster than Logano up front. And And had he wrecked with Larson, 
Go ahead. I was just gonna, like, had he not made contact with Larson coming out of the pits, which still I I don't understand why he's racing that hard in that situation. And he just if he just gives Larson the position and then because that's coming to the end of stage two, we're going to go to the caution and we're going to do a restart. Beat him on the restart. Anyways, had that not happened, we probably get Reddick and Larson battling Truex and Busher up front. And then yeah. we get to see like a battle for the ages for the win. And I think maybe that's part of Logano's strategy. Like he's like, oh, Reddick's just way faster. He's going to pass me sooner than later. I'm just going to take my medicine now and hopefully salvage well, that- the top five day but it was just a weird weird decision yeah like i think that it was clear the best two cars on track were reddick and larson from the game yeah. uh i will give you props that justin haley call was a great one until it wasn't but um that dude was running in the top 10 at one point obviously um you know didn't end up finishing the race but i think i think justin haley at sub seven percent i think is fine uh, Stenhouse was pretty solid. Moved forward, did enough to be interesting at five percent. Five percent—that's not bad. No. Um. Bah, 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 bah. Then we had Elliott, Busher, McDowell, Chastain. Oh, this is the same lineup. So this is this lineup crushed or did well. Um. Then we had a Larson, Elliott, Busher, Bowman, Logano, Keslowski. Keslowski was great. He was one of my picks in the in the Substack article, which uh, I'll show here in a second. But AOP podcast at Substack.com. Brian and I each pick uh, three drivers for DraftKings, and then we have our p- favorite bets. It also has links to this the week's episodes. It has our final betting card. It has all kinds of stuff. Completely free to subscribe to. Ends up in your em- email inbox every race day. Highly, highly, highly suggest taking a look at that and, and click consider subscribing. Um, but yeah, Busher was solid. Larson was solid. Kozlowski was solid. Um, pretty, Brad pretty Keselowski decent. Kozlowski on a road course. Uh, I, he, but if you look at his stuff at Sonoma, he's like, he's never winning the race. He's never really even like a top 10 car, but when he's a, you know, 30th place and he consistently finishes between, you know, 13 and 18 yeah. and there's a top 10 in there, like it's a worthwhile gamble at his price. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, and I, you know, he paid off once again, 50 some points. Uh, so the Busher Kozlowski Stenhouse, obviously that shouldn't have been Denny Hamlin, uh, anybody else. And it, this is a really, really good lineup. Um, the thing though is like, we didn't even get to see what Hamlin had. I mean, he literally yeah. exploded on. Yeah. Yeah. JGR was just like Truex ran out of, ran out of gas. Hamlin exploded. Uh, Ty Gibbs had an issue. Like what, what? What did they do to Sonoma that made Sonoma react to them like that? Let me just say thanks to Ty Gibbs for taking out his right front early because I got to cash a couple of matchups with worry free early yeah. on. Yeah, there was some Hamlin matchups. There was some Ty Gibbs matchups mm-hmm. and someone else I was looking at and all of them were out quickly. And I was like, I should have just I could have been sitting here counting my money and enjoying the rest of the race. But uh, that's not how it went. Uh, we will look at the betting card. Um, overall, much, much better, uh, especially for me. I like seeing green on the card. Uh, Tyler Reddick, top Toyota, came through at the very end. Probably shouldn't have happened, but that's okay. Uh, not not probably. Of, that, that, there's no but way. There's that lots should. of weeks where we definitely should have cashed something, and we didn't, so... Uh, you can uh, you can thank James you can you can thank James Small and the nineteen crew team for not filling Truex's gas. Yeah, thing. I don't I don't know how like Reddick, but also based on the way Reddick's car was going and what we should have done all day, it was also a good bet, right? Like he. Oh yeah, yeah. I he, I thought he was going to run away with that for sure. He shouldn't have cashed it, but he did. Uh, Chastain's shot top five. Agree to disagree on that one. Uh, McDriver top 10. I added the McDriver top Ford and the Busher top Ford when I locked in that Logano number at what, 12? Um, what, was, what was Logano's top Ford? A uh, 10. So when I had that 10 locked in and it was obviously moved to basically like plus 100 and something, I was like, well, here's two long shots that I feel like are pretty decent values at plus 550 and 8 to 1. Let's put you know, not even a full unit or maybe like a full unit on all three of them combined. 
and look to hit a winner and McDriver plus 550 gets there. Um, you know, pretty nice third of a unit in almost two units out. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that arbitrage. If you can find a way to get into something like that, I think it works. Obviously most weeks it's not going to happen. Um, you have to get a long number. It has to become really short. Then you have to find a way to kind of bet against it. Um, so I was happy with that. St. Shouts to McDriver, um, you know, the top 10 and the top board. Um, and then Larson over Truex uh, was Brian and I's probably favorite bet pre-practice and qualifying. And, you know, L- Truex, yeah, I ran out of gas, but Larson was still the, I think, the better car most of the day. And he was, even if it was 1-2, it was going to be Larson Truex. So, uh and- uh, one more thing on that bet too. When that opened at plus one thirty five, if if you're a large better, you had a wonderful opportunity to guarantee a profit come Sunday morning because the mar- the books had flipped the matchup to like Truex plus one ninety in some places, yeah. plus one eighty. I mean, if you're betting large sums, you you were looking at a guaranteed payday. So you got to keep an eye out for stuff like that, especially pre practice numbers that you think are going to flip on their head. Yep. Yep. Uh, if, yeah. If you can, if you, if you can bet, book yourself a, a guaranteed profit on, you know, a matchup that flips the other way completely, um, totally worth doing. So you had the Elliott top five. I was tempted to add that a few times. I just couldn't quite get myself to pull the trigger at by basically even money or a little bit north of there. Uh, the McDriver top four, obviously you hopped on and then the Blaney top 10, the Blaney top 10 was nice too. A wild ride for him. He was way up front and then way in the back and then way back, uh, mm-hmm. you know, kind of near that top 10 mark. So um, cash it like, all a day. Um, digging I ourselves mean, out, out of the hole a little bit. Yeah, and no, I'll, I'll just add one more time. Like with the stage break cautions back at road courses, I it's something I'm going to have to consciously remind myself is that it doesn't matter who's got a good car because if you get a caution at the wrong time, yeah. you're – will be completely screwed up they were just because ta- during the race they were talking about it with kyle larson and chase elliott with them running longer if they got a caution shortly after they pit they were going to be screwed because yep. they were going to be mired back in traffic with everybody allowing their tires to cool down and it's going to be much more difficult for them to move, move through the field so you know that's something to keep in mind as we hit a few more road courses uh, the right rest of the season whereas like last year without the cautions it, it really didn't matter because they, they weren't already built in and you knew we were going to get elongated green flag runs yeah. and guys were less worried about that type of situation. Yeah. And I'd love to know NASCAR's thought process on like, obviously they tried not having them. So there was a reason they it, did that. It, it's, it, it, it's manufactured entertainment. Think about it. R- restarts are like the most exciting part of races That's sometimes true. because people dive bomb and there's contact and all that stuff. And you had people last year complaining about like true exit Sonoma where he basically, he smashed the field, but that was racing. Like that was yeah. true, true to the sport of he had the best car. He was able to work through the field. He got to the front and he ran away with it. Like that, that's I I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I guess that's, that's why NASCAR added the stage breaks in every race mostly. Cause yeah, they, they want you'd have that. Kyle Larson winning by like 20. He'd be, he'd be max yeah. for stopping people on one and a half sometimes. Right. And then we'd be talking about, you know, people would be making Netflix or be making, um, TikToks yeah. about how NASCAR is a joke and, Kyle Larson wins every race by 20 seconds and so stupid. True. Very true. Um, all right. So the sub stack that I point that I'd mentioned, here's what it looks like. Uh, we post every week. We do our, our DraftKings thoughts. McDowell, Haley nailed them. Uh, the, I almost went Larson and I couldn't quite get myself on board, even though he was the better option. I went William Byron, who was basically gone after five minutes, but we did both were on McDowell and then Brad Kay. Um, and then your, your McDowell made the cut, your Chase Elliott top five made the cut, winner, winner. Um, and then mine were Chastain top five and Reddick top Toyota, which, you know, didn't really talk about either of them on the pod. So it's really important that you, uh, that you get to the sub stack because sometimes bets, new bets show up as the day goes along and, um, we want to get advantage. And then obviously our, uh, episodes and then our betting cards made the, the end of the uh, newsletter. If there's other things you'd like to see, definitely let us know. We're always looking to uh, improve upon that. But with that being said, let's shift our focus. Let's talk some corn. 
Uh, NASA, the corn NASA, Iowa corn 350, baby. If you what build it, they will come. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, haven't really ran this track. Last time was 2019 as part of the Xfinity series. Christopher Bell was in that race. Harrison Burton, Noah Gragson, Chase Briscoe, Austin Sindrick, Justin Haley, Tyler Reddick. Um, I think that's everybody. Shorter, flatter, a um, little bit of Phoenix Corollary, a little bit of, where was I looking? I need to, a um, little bit of Richmond or potentially Gate, like, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to truly know, but yeah. um, I guess, how are you going into the week with this newer track? We've never seen the cup cars on. Or no, I haven't seen it in a long time. We haven't seen this version of the cup car on there. A lot of these drivers haven't done it or haven't driven it in six years, uh, five, six years. Where's your head at? How are you approaching this week? What do you, what is, what's your plan for, uh, for Iowa? This is basically how I'm going into this weekend's race. <laughs> like I have zero clue how I'm going to handicap this thing with no cup history here and only a handful of guys in nascar right now who have actually ran here in the xfinity series yeah. i mean obviously christopher bell he opened up as a significant favor and he's taken in money already just because he probably should have won the last three races at this track in the xfinity series i mean the the last one where he didn't win he led over like 230 laps so he's clearly bet the best car there he was great in phoenix this year so obviously I think that's probably the closest track. I, I don't know. I, there's a lot smarter people than this on me for me, but yeah, I, I can't really get down on anything. I will say uh, <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment as Kyle would like to say, but Tyler Reddick opened at 14 to one at a couple of books. And of course my, my stupid ass is like, Ooh, I, I like that number just because of his qualifying efforts. At similar tracks, I think the number is going to shorten. And if they can just put together a whole effing race, they can't. They show only Charlie <laughs> Brown stop stepping up to the football every single time they're pulling it away from you, and every time you're falling on your butt. I know, but the thing is, is like when you bet pr early week numbers, I, I want I want values, like yeah. and somebody who could potentially win if they do that. And my my thinking with somebody like Reddick, for instance, is. He's going to come out. He's going to look fast Friday and Saturday. And then we're going to get a shorter number. And then I don't have to bet him again because then like I'm sitting on good value. And then I can maybe fade him in a couple of matchups thinking this shit that happened in Sonoma is going to happen again. Yeah. Um, so what I'm hearing is there's no way in hell we're betting Christopher Bell, even as good as he's oh, been at this no. track. Inside four to one on a track we haven't really ran is ludicrous. Yeah. Um, so as Brian mentioned, we get practice on Friday, we get qualifying on Saturday, and then we get the race on Sunday. Um, do we know if anyone is running from the cup is running qualifying uh, for Xfinity? No, but uh, so something I did do quick research on this morning, the three cars that did test here, then they were yeah. apparently they were here for like over 10 hours. Uh, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Larson, and Christopher Bell. And we saw what Christopher Bell did at Phoenix after he did the tire test there. So uh, take that yeah. for what you will. Seeing if I can find out um, who may be in the field. Um, yeah. Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Martin Truex rounds out the guys inside the top 10. Yeah, it feels gross to bet any of those guys. Uh, all right, here's the entry list for Xfinity. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Nobody, nobody, nobody. You mean we're actually going to get an actual Xfinity race without Cup guys interrupting? Uh, it looks like Ross Chastain is interrupting, which is Brian's music to Brian's ears. Um, as far as I can tell, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. So we're actually getting an Xfinity race, which you want more info on the Xfinity field, potential bets there. Make sure you 
check out the NASCAR betting preview show. Uh, they do a really good job uh, breaking down all the Xfinity and they do trucks and they do all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So at least at this point for me, it's hard to bet anybody inside 10 to one. And even as we get outside 10 to one, it's hard to get to those numbers. Obviously Hamlin's been really good at shorter flatter. Um, you know, one Richmond 23 uh, was really good in Phoenix. Just good in Richmond has been really strong just kind of in general. I don't blame anybody who grabs the seven because if he comes out and dusts the field, that number is like four or five and maybe, you know, that, that feels nice to have, but it's hard to, it's hard to get super locked in on anybody inside 10 to one for a track that really hasn't seen cup cars. Something else, uh, uh, real quick too that I, I, I was trying to find information on this this morning um i haven't seen bob uh Pacris tweet about this yet but when they did the tire test it was for nascar to try to decide and get feedback as to what tire combination to run here so i'm really interested to see if we've had this whatever tire combination they choose where they ran it at earlier this year because yeah. that's going to be very telling in you know who was good on that tire set and all that kind of garbage Yep. Uh, Logano 11, Byron 11, Brad K, who ran here 12, Reddick. Brian's already mentioned and got in on him at 14. Um, and then Chase Elliott is 16. Um, we say this every week, but William Byron is always interesting. Outside 10 to 1, um, has been really good at shorter flatter, although wasn't great in terms of speed at phoenix it was a little slower at richmond and then was even worse at gateway so you know they've 23 is kind of booing a lot of his numbers yeah they've definitely hit a rough patch with that 24 team recently yeah yeah it's been between issues on the track and just not being super duper fast it's kind of interesting after seeing him look so good where you know through the midway point, we're working towards the playoffs. Obviously, there's a patch where, you know, Byron and Hendrick in general kind of gets ugly. Um, but I feel like it's a little early for that. So it's kind of interesting to see how they're performing. Um, I don't hate the Elliott number. Yeah, um, I'm into it. Like, I think we're at a point now with Chase that he's proven – that they're an upfront car. Yeah. And, it, you know, if stuff falls the right way, I think he can win. I, I don't necessarily think he's got like what Larson or even Reddick does sometimes when they unload or Denny or Christopher Bell, but I think he's now in the conversation of what we were talking about, like with Martin Truex last year, where every single week he was just a like a third through seventh place car. And if stuff fell the right way, he could win the race. And he's going to qualify well, is my assumption. Yeah, I'm a little worried. Larson's clearly the n number one driver HMS. Bowman's clearly the fourth. It's the middle two that they kind of flip-flop depending on how things are going. And with Chase going this way and Byron coming down, I'm a little worried that Chase is going to get a little more attention, a little bit better of the the parts or whatever. Um, yeah. They'll just give him a little extra as he's ascending, getting back to where he was and how important he is to NASCAR as a whole. Um, I'm adding 16 to one. It may be uh, <laughs> silly, but that was a great, that was a great self conversation. <clears throat> I looked at myself and I said, "Self, you're betting Chase Elliott this week at sixteen to one." Well, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's been anybody as consistent as him this year. He he yeah. he has yet to finish worse than nineteenth. He dude has not wrecked out of a race. He's led laps. Well, he's at a eighteen ton of in Superbook. I'm taking that. Sorry, like he's just been he's been so good this year, and because he's not winning races, like. And he's being overshadowed by his teammate Kyle Larson. I, you know, I think he's going undervalued still at the at the sports books. Yeah. Like, why why is Ty Gibbs, who yeah maybe he showed a little bit faster at Phoenix? Why is he twelve to one when he has never won a Cup Series event? When Chase Elliott is freaking eighteen. If you, I'll take Chase Elliott in a matchup against him every single week right now. Yeah, I mean we could 
have a similar discussion about why is Tyler Reddick 12 and Chase Elliott 16, but <laughs> obviously Reddick's listening. Tyler Reddick has proven he could win at the cup level, though. Yeah, that's fair. I'm telling you, before Xander won the uh, whatever players, I think. Yeah. He, they were the, they were simpatico. They, yeah, he, they, he was priced as a winner without actually winning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think right now too, like Elliot's numbers. When we go a little bit further into the book and we look at placement markets, I, I think there's some decent value on on Chase. Yeah, yeah, I think he. It's hard to not be excited about him. It's just hard. Uh, Busher 20, Kyle Bush 25, Ross 28. Nope. Um, <laughs> are you just going to say nope every time I bring him up? He's on my shit list right now. I'm still angry. Yeah. Uh, do we think Chris Busher, who I think has been pretty good at shorter flatter, um, you know, which obviously wasn't very good at gateway this year. Has shown speed. Was really good at New Hampshire and Richmond, and uh, looked good at Phoenix. Obviously, you know we know what RFK did at Phoenix and how that kind of flipped the field. And I was going to say, actually. I still stand by they they didn't deserve those finishes <laughs> as far as but cars. Do we think Brad running in the it running the tire <laughs> test and learning some stuff is going to help Busher and help him be more prepared more prepared for uh, Sunday's race? Yeah, I definitely think there's a world where Busher benefits from having Kislowski in his camp and with Kislowski's past experience. I mean, he won the first ever Xfinity race here at Iowa. So, you know, obviously that's going to help him. But these guys are two different. They have two different driving styles. And Kislowski is a guy who if we do get really long green flag runs, which is, you know, we saw at Phoenix, we saw at Richmond, um, that's going to benefit Kislowski more than it does Busher. But I think Busher sometimes is a little bit faster. So, I mean, I don't mind getting there at the 20 to 1 number. Um, you can get Kozlowski a little bit longer than this at our favorite offshore. So I I actually I actually bet that um, just because I think he's going to he's going to qualify decent having had tested here. So, yeah, I, I don't mind Busher at 20. I would much rather bet Busher at a shorter number than bet Chastain, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. But you hate Rashad. Chastain actually. hasn't shown race winning speed yet. No, no. He's been a top 10 car. Like last week he was great Sonoma, but that doesn't translate at all to what we're going to in Iowa. But he also dominated Phoenix last year. And when his car Yeah, was... but that was like, I don't know that. I feel like that was weird circumstances. I felt like they went in extra hard while the rest of the teams were just like, look, this is the last race of the year. Let's just not F up. Let's try to keep our equipment clean. So we don't have to do a bunch of maintenance after the last race. And it was only the championship four guys and Ross Chastain out there trying to tune their cars to win the race. Yeah. I mean, looking at his heat chart from shorter flatter, like he was fine at Phoenix. He was really good at Richmond one, but then, and this is 2023. Um, but then it was kind of slow at gateway. It was really slow at New Hampshire and Richmond too. Found the speed at Phoenix. Then obviously it was slow at Phoenix this year, slow at, at Richmond this year. And, so he's been kind of underwhelming on shorter yeah, flatter wow. kind of in general. Like he, there's a couple weeks where he really pops and if he shows speed and looks awesome, maybe you bet it at 12 or 14 or whatever. But um, at this point I'm probably staying away. Um, whenever we talk shorter flatter, Brian, there's one team that shows up for me and I'm very excited to bet. However, we, However. Know, the, we know the situation extreme. Stephen A. Smith, a voice. However, we know the situation around SHR. Um, as I mentioned, Gragson's ran here. He ran here in 2019. Uh, I like Chase Briscoe at shorter flatter. I like Josh Berry at years. shorter flatter. Um, I keep, Josh Berry was seventh in terms of speed at Richmond. He was ninth at Gateway. He's 40 to 1. Uh, 35 to 1. What's the best number you can get on Josh Berry? 60? I'm going to nibble at 60. Yeah. I I mean, clearly, I think Josh Berry is the class of that garage in, in this particular package or on this track. So I don't mind getting there at 60, but... Especially when he's like 35 or 40 a lot of places. 
Yeah, I I still think though, um, like Austin Cindric winning is a bit of an anomaly. I mean, it took two, it took the best two cars essentially ruining their own races. Yeah, that's fair. For him to for him to win, like he was fine, he was really good, but he didn't have a race winning car. No, he was. Like, he shouldn't have won that. Yeah, you, it's very rare that not only the top car has some sort of issue that makes their you know end their day are on like the end of the race but for the top two cars top two cars yeah we both have issues right as we're coming to the checkered flag um and for cinder just to kind of sneak in there it's kind of wild <laughs> um but yeah but the 60 number yeah i i'm kind of with you he's probably a better like top four bet uh, top 10 maybe top five find him in matchups i think he's gonna be interesting i like him and I like Chase Briscoe. I'm going to have exposure to both on the card, but when I can get 60 and he's a lot shorter elsewhere, uh, oh, Briscoe 62, adding him. Oh my gosh. Yeah, neither of them are going to win. Um, but 60 to 1, they come out, look awesome. And all of a sudden, that's 22 to 1. I'm going to be happy and not unable to do anything about it because he's not going to win. Um, I just, I gotta, I gotta take my medicine and, and just deal with it. Um, uh, all right, let's see. I'm going to actually yeah, make this because it bothers me. Um, all right. 60 to one. Let's ride. Anything else? Any other longer shots? Michael McDowell. Maybe we, you know, gonna obviously... say, I'm going to add the McDowell hundred to one. Yeah. I think that's a good bet. Yeah, that 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 I don't mind. I mean, we just saw him qualify on the pole at Gateway, so yeah, maybe we just do pole bets and not uh, overthink this. Let's see, do we have pole bets? Uh, we maybe. Here. And mind you, like this is a. Like this is a tenth of a unit wager. This is not. Oh yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen pole bets in a while, but it is. It is earlier in the week. Uh, top Chevy Larson one hundred and fifty, Byron two hundred and eighty, Chase four hundred and seventy five. Don't hate that. Ross six to one. Kyle Busch seven and a half. To me, raw uh, chase at four seventy five is the compelling one that jumps out. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of skeptical about getting into any of these markets right now. Just How is because... Briscoe twelve and Josh Berry sixteen? When they're, I'd rather bet McDowell at thirty five. I am actually going to bet McDowell at thirty five. <laughs> yeah, like. I know I know Briscoe and Barry have a little more prowess when it comes to this track type, but in terms of who's just been a better car all season, it's got to be Michael McDowell. And you know, you're going to tell me you're going to give me 35 to one on the the second or third or the third or fourth fastest for, or uh, maybe fifth, but with Kozlowski in there. But like, yeah, I'm going to take that. Yeah. And then on that same note, uh, going back to us talking about the RFK guys, like I almost think betting Busher at plus six twenty five is a safer yeah. bet to grab him at that twenty to one number for an outright, just because I think it's much more likely that he's competing with his teammate Brad K for the top Ford position, and you have Kyle Larson and a couple of Toyotas running up front. I think that's a phenomenal call. Uh, speaking of those Toyotas, is there a way to profit off of Christopher Bell being absurdly priced? Yeah, Tyler Reddick. Reddick. 650? <laughs> oh. I mean, it worked last week. Maybe I'll go back to the well. Yeah, no, I, man. I don't know. Like, I, I think a different conversation is to be had with this group because when you look at the Toyotas, they've been so fast. And, you know, you expect Denny to come out really quick. You expect uh, Truex to perform really well here, too. I think you're just better off betting like a, a Reddick or a Gibbs outright because if they're beating those three guys, Bell, Hamlin, Truex, in all likelihood, they're they're up front. They're first yeah. through third and possibly winning. Yeah, I just the, – the, the Larson HMS stuff always worries me, and I always like 
having yeah, a little but I think, for him. I think less than last week. I think this week it's more Larson, and then everyone else is a little bit further behind. So is there value on Chevy minus 105 versus Ford? No, I don't think so because I think you got Larson and then in the same category as Larson on this track type, I think you have a handful of Fords, whereas the next level of Chevy guys is behind those top four dudes. Larson top Chevy, Hamlin top Toyota 10 to 1. I don't like parlaying those, man. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can get Elliot 18 at yep. FanDuel if you want to bet him out, right? You can get him at uh, Superbook, too. Oh. Anything top 10 wise that makes sense. Ty Gibbs. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kyle Bush, Bubba Wallace. Briscoe's plus 160. Josh Berry. Dallas 4 to 1. Already on the card, buddy. Okay. I'm adding the McDowell top 10. I always worry about. I always worry about the like getting too excited about these longer shots, the top 10, just because when worm does is like, okay, who's going to finish in the top 10? Like it fills up r- really quickly and there's really like maybe one or two spots that are open. Yeah. So, but I mean, the thing though is like this, is these are all before we see them unload. And after you see cars unload, then that's when you can go back in and, you know, try to predict who's going to be the top 10 cars. So obviously like right now you're trying to see what type of value is going to be out there. And the same thing that happened at gateway with Michael McDowell, when he opened it eight to one to top 10 and he pulled it like in all likelihood is going to be fast again. He's probably going to qualify inside or right near the top 10. And this number is going to be two to one come Saturday night or Sunday morning. Is Josh Berry plus 240 a good bet for top 10 or is that too short? I don't think so. It should probably be like 350. Yeah, like it, again, going back, it, why is he priced shorter than Michael McDowell? It's a great question. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like I know he's he's renowned for this type of track, but he's also been really good at short flat this year, and obviously not at, not as much at Phoenix, but he had tons of speed at Richmond and Gateway. Yeah, but he can't finish. Like that's the problem. So he's basically Tyler Reddick is what you're saying. <laughs> That's messed up, man. Keep throwing This is so up. easy. He's just lobbing me softballs. I got to crush him <laughs> over the fence. I got to put oh, on a yeah. show for the people. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to – hopefully I can get a Ross Chastain versus Reddick matchup this week because I'm going to – Let's do matchups. Empty the holster on that. Let's do matchups. I can't wait till, he, till Reddick's beating the whole race and then he – has an issue at the end, and Ross ends up beating him. <laughs> oh, you know uh, it's happening, too. Chase minus 150 versus Busher. Busher plus 120, I don't hate, but I'm, you know, obviously on Chase. So yeah, Chase is definitely, he's he's on the up and up. Gibbs over Truex. Yeah, Chase's head-to-head in market has been um, just, like, kind of aggressively priced. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. Byron Logano. I don't hate Byron there. Bell. Does Fade Bell? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. So in that Byron Logano one, I actually like that. I like Logano better, but I don't think he should be on even par with William Byron. Like, I think it should be Byron, like, minus 115, Logano minus 105, maybe. I think that's fair. You can take your Reddick plus money against Keselowski. No way. <laughs> Who's safer? Like that's the I, that scares me. Um, uh, let's see. Any value over here? Larson plus one ten against Chris Bell is interesting. Ooh. 
Blaney plus 140 or plus 120 against Denny. Blaney versus Larson. Oh, I found I found him. Tyler Reddick plus 100 versus Gibbs. So that that's going on there, but there's there's two below that. Uh, Tyler Reddick plus 100 versus Truex. Face over Ross. You better believe it, buddy. Um, and Busher over Busher Ross. Ross. <laughs> F him this week, dig we it. It be a watermelon friendly podcast. Now Brian's out here trying to crush him and like. I'm hurt, man. I am like, I, I'm hurt after after that race. That one was. That hurt one's money so don't make money, Brian. Yeah. Oh, give it to me, baby. Briscoe plus 100 versus Austin Sindrick. That's the lock of the century of the week. Oh, my. lock of the century of the week, huh? Man, that is a that's an interesting. I feel like they're definitely playing into Sindrick's performance at Gateway. Which that was all track position based, in my opinion. I just don't get it. This guy well, barely barely finishes top fifteen more than like tw- twice. Yeah, and, and we're gonna like make him a favorite in a matchup. No, Let you. me also add in his four attempts at Iowa in the Xfinity series, Cindric has one top ten, an average finish of nineteenth. Where Briscoe finished top 10 and all three of his has a win as well. So bang biscuit, bang biscuit. All right. Um, we should take a peek at championship odds before we get out of here. But before we do that, anything else you want to look at anything I may have missed Does DraftKings have matchups or anything that we need to check out. Of course they don't. I mean, I, why would they DraftKings, FanDuel and ESPN bet? Like I swear every week it's like, Tuesday for Thursday, Wednesday, like they have, there's no consistency. They just like arbitrarily drop stuff and we're like, Oh, they have stuff. And the next week it'll be like <laughs> ghost town. Yeah. Um, I, I, I will say I did tweet at, uh, I think he's like the sports book operator at circa, um, Jeffrey Benson. And I asked him about his NASCAR odds and apparently they drop them every Tuesday afternoon around the same time. It's like, 1230 or so Pacific, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I apologize if that is wrong, but at least I know like Circa, Circa and Westbrook in Las Vegas, they're the most consistent in dropping lines. Like West Superbook is always on Monday. Like Monday nights, you get their entire uh yeah, offering portfolio of bets open. I wanna te- I wanna um hit up Todd and see. Rank these in terms of handle WNBA, UFL. NASCAR. Oh, it would definitely go WNBA first by by a long shot because yeah. like the books have been taking a ton of money on Caitlin Clark games. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um yeah. I'm curious to like I feel like, you know, we all like we're excited to bet NASCAR every week, but like it really is like DFL for in terms of pecking order. Like it's and now they have like Soccer stuff happening in the in golf major, and we're not going to get shit this week. Uh, I hope you got Larson before this week's win because he is now inside four to one. Most places, let's see uh, what they have over here just to kind of have a um, let's see. Hey, it's not on the card, but uh, I did bet Larson a month and a half ago. I got him at plus 745 at Circa Championship That's Future. Beautiful. That is, that is beautiful. I'm pulling up what I have him at right now. Um, I have, I have six. I also six have a. Futures? What's that? Six. No, I have oh, him at six to one. The number. I have five futures, but I have him at six to one. Oh, okay. Um, Denny Hamlin four to one. Byron five to one. Uh, Chris Bell at seven and a half. I just added him at eight on my card. Did, I, did we bet him? Championship. I haven't added Bell. Uh, I think Bell is somebody to consider. And then also, uh, 
I don't hate adding Truex if you can get a proper number on him because you got to think we're going to a couple of tracks where he's probably going to, I mean, we're going to New Hampshire where he's been really good at. And then we got Nashville where it's another type of Mark Truex track. We got a ton of road courses yet to come. Like, Do you trust him at Phoenix though? Yeah, if they don't give him a shit box and his car doesn't explode, like... I, it's different when you get into that situation of racing for a championship. Like, I think you see a much different race from, from a Truex, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Because they, he, he, they were, the, the JGR cars were the best in the field. Um, well, that and Tyler Reddick uh, at the first Phoenix race this year. So if he so, can get there, I definitely think he's a contender. So would you rather bet Truex at 10 or Chase Elliott at 10? Man, probably Elliot to be honest, because Elliot already has a win. You can get him at twelve. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate that. Um, we, I bet him at nine before the season started. We both, yeah, did. so did I. <laughs> do do we dare add him at twelve, or is that like? I don't know. It's just so hard <laughs> getting in on on championship futures. I think if you already have exposure, I think you just wait and you bet him weekly for yeah. for race wins. Yeah, so right now I have Chase at 9, I have Chastain at 20, Brad K at 16, and I added Christopher Bell at 7.5. You have Elliott at 9, Logano at 14, Chastain at 20, and Tyrone at 25. Um, neither of us added Larson to our, our show card. Um, yeah, I was just going to say on the card, no. We but... probably should have done that, but that's okay. Yeah. Probably missed our window. We'll just double down at Phoenix. Um, any longer shots that you think, like Chastain, I know you hate him, but 30, Ty Gibbs at 30. Well, I I have both of them, actually, so. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of sad about Ross because I just don't know, like, if he's shown race winning stuff no. yet. He's he's kind of got sitting in that. I don't, I don't even say he's sitting in the Harvick bucket because that would require him to be consistently near the you know top five every week. Like he's yeah, just that's like, not the case. All best case scenario, he's top five. Worst case scenario, he's twenty five. Like he's just kind of yeah. all over the place. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I added Bell at seven and a half. I'm going to shop it to see if I can get a better number. I, I per- personally added eight. I don't know if that is sitting anywhere. I'll try and find it. Um, b- 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 Brian, it was good to catch up. Actually, let me pull up the card so people can see where we're sitting right now. Uh Uh, so I have for this week, Chase Elliott, uh, 18. I have Josh Berry at 60, Chase Briscoe at 60. Cause you know, that I like to lose money. Uh, Michael McDowell, top Ford McDowell, top 10 and Briscoe over Sindrick plus a hundred Cinco units. Moss. <coughs> Brian has McDowell at 100. He has Reddick at 14. He has McDowell top 10. He has Busher over Chastain. He has Elliott over Chastain because of uh, the 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 vendetta that's been thrown down and then Reddick over Gibbs. Um, <laughs> any of these you are especially excited about or are they all pretty just like good value at this point? We'll see what practice and qualifying brings us. So I think... Um... Bias aside, I, I, I have a tough time deciding between Elliott over Chastain or Reddick over Gibbs just based on the consistency of qualifying that we've seen out of Chase yeah. as opposed to Chastain. I think there's a good shot that this floats out to like minus 150, minus 160. And then Reddick versus Gibbs, like to me, I don't understand why this is an even money proposition. This should be probably minus 110 both, both ways because they're both going to qualify well is yeah. my assumption. Uh, I will say uh, be around when stuff happens because with practice on Friday and then qualifying on Saturday and then the race on Sunday, 
there might be an opportunity, if you think you can find one, post-practice, pre-qualifying, to grab some potential value and maybe get yourself a, hey, this guy looked really good. I expect him to qualify well. Let me grab it now. Um, you may find some some opportunity. I know that happened last week between practice and qualifying at Sonoma. Yeah. Hopefully we get another opportunity this week at Iowa to do the same. We'll have to keep a lookout. Uh, if you follow Brian and I at Brian underscore twining and at Notorious KRO over on X, uh, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, if we see cool, no, be Twitter. we see outrights that, that are interesting. Uh, we will uh, definitely um, share those around. For Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy the rest of your week. Let us know down in the comments, was Kyle Bush at fault? Was Ross Chastain at fault? Was it a nonsensical thing at Sonoma? Subscribe if you haven't yet to do so. Hit the like button. Do all the things. We'll talk to you next time.